are these people? Um, we're not going to talk about the DNC, but this story kind of relates to the DNC in terms of how four years ago, Medicare for All slash universal health care was a hot topic. And given mm-hmm. that we were in the midst of the pandemic at that time, you it was probably especially- could have gotten shirts for it at Hot Topic when that was still around, you know? Probably. A little, little now, um, and, uh, right. So fast forward shirt. to four years later, and we're still waiting for, well, I shouldn't say still waiting. We actually do have some of what Kamala is proposing to do um, as president, but you might notice that there isn't really anything regarding, we're not seeing universal health care, Medicare for any of that language from four years ago is mm-hmm. just more reformist um, proposals in terms of expanding Obamacare, like expanding um, like lower costs, making healthcare yeah. affordable, like expanding a lot of the... access to access to access to healthcare, right? Right. Um... So you yeah. exist so... in the context. Of all in which you live and what came before you. Hate you forget. You gotta be playing a lot of her. You know, <laughs> I, I only have did like, forget that. I only have like three things from her, so <laughs> I need to. I'm gonna have to oh, start collecting more. I'm sure more you're gonna add a playing. lot more. I'm sure you're gonna add a lot more crap from her over the next few weeks. Yeah. Do not. Anyway. Come. Um. Well, that one we you've had. Um. <laughs> so. So I wanted, I thought it was kind of interesting, um, this article. Um, so I wanted to kind of share it with you guys. Um, so this was actually both articles I pulled were, are from Truthout. Uh, we haven't used them a lot. Yeah. Uh, but this is an op-ed from Tyler Mitchell, who writes, Universal Healthcare was big on the 2020 Democratic platform. Where is it now? Democrats ran on healthcare in 2020. In this year's draft platform, it gets a handful of bullet points. So, but, but did they? I wanna... Did they run on healthcare in 2020? <laughs> I mean, as much as like. Well, I mean, I mean, you can make the argument at least it was talked about. Well, sure. Um, yeah, talked about how they didn't yeah, want to do so, it. Mainly, you right. know. Yeah, but again, in the universal the healthcare will never come to pass. That's what I remember. Um, you know. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Yes, sir. The last time the Democratic Party released the platform, mass death and illness were haunting the political landscape. By mid-August 2020, more than 160,000 U.S. citizens had died from C-19, and the daily mortality rate had just climbed above 1,000. Vaccines were still months away from being available, and nationwide cases exceeded 5.4 million. Inundated with corpses, hospitals around the world deployed mobile morgues. That summer, against a backdrop of global crisis, the Democratic National Committee unveiled bold new language on healthcare, pledging to at last build the healthcare system the American people have always deserved. A special chapter on the platform entitled Achieving universal, affordable, quality healthcare was yeah, devoted to outline oxymorons the forms, in there, right? Um, including a plan to introduce a universal public insurance option through the marketplace set up in the Affordable Care Act. That platform was in itself a compromise with progressives, such as Senator Bernard Sanders. Got to push for a single payer system and the elimination of private insurance through Medicare for All during his popular campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination that year. In 2024, however, it appears that the Democratic Party has abandoned even its watered down ideals. I am once again asking for your financial support. Fuck you, Bernie, because now because of you, I get texts from <laughs> Kamala, and now they're getting, no, and no, they're now getting so aggressive now with me I because I don't respond to them, and they're like, yeah. you have not responded to our texts <laughs> regarding Kamala Harris. No, I'm dead serious. Like, really you do. I should show you in Indy some of those texts I've been getting from I them. Said, as I sent like, one, like, I was like, that aggressive. I was like, new phone, who dis? 
anyway, I probably should say that too, honestly. <laughs> but, um, nope. um, the draft Democratic platform for this po- election cycle obtained by Politico in July contains no mention of the phrases public option, public option or yep. universal health care. Yeah, okay, yep. In fact, although polls have shown that health care affordability remains a top concern for voters, the issue does not even receive its own chapter. Except, health care and prescription drugs is just one of several bullet points under a chi- chapter with the milquetoast title, Lowering Costs. The platform attained by Politico is not setting stone. Uh, I beg to differ on that. Notably, it was written when President Joe Biden was still the presumptive nominee, and much of the text focuses on his record as president. While Vice President Kamala Harris signed on Sanders-sponsored Medicare for All Act as senator in 2017, her current position on health care remains vague. Harris' campaign aides recently told reporters that she no longer backs Medicare for All, and it seems unlikely that her platform will deviate substantially from the Biden administration's positions. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? As a result, the draft offers the best insight into what we can expect to see, well, last week, when delegates convened at the Democratic National Convention to vote on an official party platform. Look at the gaslight. The 2024 platform is heavy on fluffy language, mostly tooting the Biden administration's past accomplishments but light on specifics. Healthcare should be a right in America, not a privilege. Every American deserves the peace of mind that quality, affordable coverage brings, the 2024 platform states. Democrats pledge to continue the fight for the expansion of the ACA, noting that today, more Americans have health insurance than ever in history. A record number of people signed up for the ACA after the passage of the American Rescue Act Rescue Plan Act of 2021, in which the Biden administration made more Americans eligible to receive tax credits to offset the cost of premiums. These temporary enhanced subsidies were removed once in the Inflation Reduction Act, but are now set to expire next year. In the platform, Democrats pledged to renew the tax credits and fight Republican efforts to let them end. Mm -hmm. These perpetually precarious subsidies are far cry from Medicare for All or real public option. And while it's true that in the United States has seen a streak of record low uninsured rates since Biden took office, earlier this month, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced the number of uninsured Americans rose during the first months of 2024, bucking the trend. Low-income Americans will be automatically enrolled in the public option at zero cost to them though they may choose to opt out at any time, Democrats promised in their 2020 platform. That public option was sponsored, supposed to include at least one planned choice without deductibles and would cover all primary care without any co-payments and control costs or other treatments by negotiating prices with doctors and hospitals, just like Medicare does on behalf of older people. There is no mention of such an option in the 2024 plan. Mm Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to Biden's public option, KFF Health News asked in an article published this April. The piece noted that, despite coming out strong for a public option on the campaign trail, Biden didn't utter the phrase once after December 2020. There are some promises from the 2020 platform that held true. The Biden administration announced new actions to prevent surprise medical bills, negotiated lower Medicare prices for 10 prescription drugs, and capped insulin co-pays at $35 for Medicare recipients. Nevertheless, exorbitant health care costs continue to trouble most Americans. Average premiums for an employer-provided health care family health insurance plan reached $23,968 in 2023, a 7% increase that outpaced the rise of both wages, 5.2%, and inflation, 5.8%. According to a February 2024 KFF health tracking poll, 74% of adults are worried about affording unexpected medical bills. Which I'm sure that's a medical understatement. Debt, is, sure. Medical debt, which is associated with poor health and increased mortality rates, declined from 2020 to 2022, 
but 41% of adults still reporting still report having it. Americans owe an estimated total of $120 billion in medical debt, with about 3 million people owing more than $10,000. And even though Democrats' sense of urgency has evidently waned, C-19 is far from eradicated, with roughly 600 people still dying from the virus every day. The 2024 draft platform is a... Right. The 2024 draft platform is a depressing reversal for what was already a modest question for progressives. Still, it was popular pressure that got a nod to universal health care on the 2020 platform in the first place. As Harris fine-tunes her campaign messaging, no, she's not, now it's time for a renewed, substantial push to remind Democrats of their own work. Health care should be a right in America, not a privilege. Uh -huh. Thoughts? I have a couple. I think it's hard right now to convince the American public, especially after that whole vid fiasco, that the medical system is on their side, especially a government controlled one. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's a problem that still has to, you know, we get asked all the time, do you want your government to control not this one? Clearly, you know, right. right. So, seems to work elsewhere you know go go look at medical prices in the rest of the world like see how much insulin actually costs in places that have common sense still you know right but and what was your you know, thought you had to see it too well uh, you know i i don't expect all of its lip service from the administrations right now you know like either they know by the time they get elected they're not going to worry about it or i'm surprised they're even talking about it now you know and well they're talking about it in terms of i think the biggest thing that i've been hearing actually really since 2022 really is and especially coming from rokana the idea of canceling that which in of right. itself sure but that still doesn't help the idea of the the idea of you know, and I said this to one of my um, I'll say leaders in DC. I don't want to necessarily last right, now. but you know, he was talking about um, I forgot what he was saying, but it was in regards to medical care, and I was basically saying, you know what, like I just had my physical when was it? Like a few weeks ago, like, like yeah. at the beginning of the month. And I have to pay, I think like 250 out of pocket now for right. a preventative thing. You know, like, why should I have to pay for that? Um, and I have insurance. Like, that's you something live, that you're you? supposed to have. Right. That's something that you're supposed to have anyway. And, but yeah, I have to pay Two hundred fifty dollars out of pocket in order to cover the remain what remains. Um, after now my insurance has gone up, so I think that's just kind of ridiculous. And like, and that's for me with insurance and can actually pay. What about like a lower class person who may not have the means to pay, or may not even have insurance but has to go to a doctor? So. It's just kind of one of those asinine things that I kind of scream at all the time. Like, we're the only country in the West that has gone, it's backwards when it comes to healthcare in this country. And the, and the costs that we're paying do not substantiate the type of care that you get. But yeah. then, like, but again, but I kind of said this in the past, you know, Democrats never really wanted to do anything. And and essentially now no one's like so you know I think like I said the I feel like the best that they're trying to make the case not for it but around it is canceling medical debt if they are even talking about that at all but that still doesn't get to the root issue of why people you know are essentially are in debt in the first place yeah. Um, so it, I just think, 
And that could have been something that they could have mentioned at DNC last week. I didn't hear anything regarding anything regarding universal healthcare other than like the reformist things that they're planning to do. Like, right. yeah, great. Like insulin is $35 for seniors. What about for everybody else? What about yeah. for people who can't necessarily afford $35 worth of insulin? Like, you know, like we can do much better than that. But so, yeah, it's just really frustrating. But expected that this yeah. is where we're at. Capitalism. Still. And, um, and there isn't this fervor you know, to do anything more beyond we will tweak uh, the Affordable Care Act just a little bit to make it seem like we're actually doing something and really it's not, um, you know, for the well majority of people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, talking points at this point for them, you know? It's, it's right. similar how every four years they're bringing up Roe v. Wade, they're bringing up you know, all those same things that they could have ratified nine, 90 times by now, you know, mm -hmm. but like until, until it hurts people's pocketbooks, they're, they're not going to change that shit. So, you know, I wish would be nice. I would love to not have yeah. to pay for medical stuff like that, but you know, <laughs> um, but you know, you could help us pay our medical bills by going to codehv.com slash indie news network. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta transition somehow, Care Bear. You know? No, don't say that. No. <laughs> you know, like scan that QR code on your screen. You know how this works by now. Right? If you can't do that, you know, we get it. Times are tough. You might have your own medical bills you gotta pay. Just, you know, like and like and subscribe, share the stream, do all the stuff you normally would to every other streamer you like. You know, some of that engagement allegedly helps. Help us help us get to 3K, 5K, 10K, you know, make that number go up. Very easy stuff. But, you know, let's know what you think. Otherwise, thanks for watching.